Hi guys, Dawn Cook here today, DaveAndDawnCook.com. I'd like to do today a follow-up video to, that I did a few days ago. It was a review of the book, The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. In that book, excuse me, in that video, I discussed the prerequisite and the first four steps that I learned from the book. Today I want to go beyond and discuss with you steps five through seven that I found in the book. And there are also some very other important um, points made in the book that I may do future videos on. First off today, I'd like to briefly review the prerequisite in the first four steps, and then we'll move forward from there. The prerequisite to creating your wealth and becoming the richest um, man or woman um, in your town is to have a burning desire to create that wealth. Such a burning desire that you are motivated to take the required action steps. Step one is to set aside 10% of your income that will be yours to keep. Step two is to learn to live comfortably on that remaining 90% by controlling your expenditures. Step three is to make that 10% and multiply uh, by making proper investments. And step four was to safeguard those investments from possible loss, especially you don't want to lose the principal portion that you've set aside. Today I'm going to get into steps five through seven. I just want to take a quick second to, to hope you notice that this time I'm sitting securely on my lanai, uh, not driving down busy city streets and through um, busy parking lots, so I can focus fully on you today. So again, step five. Step five is to make your dwelling a profitable investment. Main point here being that it makes no sense to rent. Didn't back then, it doesn't today. It's just a way to throw your money away. If you make a um, sound, affordable decision on a home to buy and a um, correlating mortgage that goes with that, then you'll essentially be able to spend the same amount of money each month, equal to what maybe your rent payment was. But rather than that money just disappearing, it's going towards an asset that you can um, develop. The main point I liked here is that you need to select a home that you can afford. A lot of times you may end up with a, a home um, that maybe is bigger than you need and where your mortgage payment ends up being a strain on your ability to live comfortably on the 90% and always invest that, invest and keep that, that 10%. So make a wise decision when you go out and um, purchase that home. You definitely want to be conservative up front. Um, you can always later on as your wealth develops, you know, go for that for that bigger house. But you always want to, you know, buy within reason to begin with. This reminded me a lot of what I've learned from Robert Kiyosaki and Rich Dad Poor Dad. In fact, Robert Kiyosaki even believes that your, that your home is not an asset, it's a liability. And it's a liability because it causes money to flow out every month through your mortgage payment and through the regular upkeep for the home. So George Clayson and Robert Kiyosaki know that your home is not um, your only investment, can't be your only investment. If it is, you're in trouble. You need to have that, you know, again, that mortgage payment has to fall comfortably in that 90%, and there always has to be that 10% that you kept up front um, to set aside to create true income-producing assets that bring in money each month rather than, rather than pulling money from you each month. Uh, step six is to plan for your future income. It's so important to not just live in, the, live in today, but to plan for and create an income stream for the future. This is to help you maintain um, the lifestyle you have now, increase it and develop it as you go forward, but to also allow that same lifestyle and level of benefits be available to your family once, once you pass on. So it's just so important to be focusing on that and doing that by picking investments that will grow continually from year to year and then when the need comes have that investment be immediately available to be used for the the needs that it was planned for from the very beginning and George Clayson even the Babylonians knew back then that it doesn't take 
the earlier you start, the less money you have to set aside um, each each year. And I did notice too that in the in this book, there's absolutely no reference to depending on Social Security for your for your future income. So that's a point that we all need to all need to recognize. So. And the other neat thing I liked about what I learned in the book is that the Babylonians, even back then, were predicting life insurance. They saw the benefit of several men and women setting aside or paying a small amount on a regular basis into a fund, and that when anybody um, that had contributed to that fund passed away, then their family members was, would receive a handsome sum um, from this pool of funds. So even back then, they were financially intelligent, they were wise, they saw what we know today as life insurance, um, even back then. So, and step seven is to always increase your ability to earn. There's times when we may find that our expenditures exceed our income, and the only real solution for that is to better your skills, to develop yourself, to make yourself more valuable um, to those that you're trying to serve. So it's um, very important to do that. George Clayson saw it, and Jim Rohn saw it. It's just so important. In fact, that's, the, that's really the only way. Because, again, you can go to your boss and ask for a raise, or you can take out a loan, or you can incur credit card debt. But the boss may say no. And I think we're all beginning to learn that bad debt is never the answer. So, again, it's working on yourself harder than you work on your job. You know, learning the, the proper skills, learning how to manage your emotions, learning how to have the right attitude, a positive attitude, um, how to make things work for you in ways that others don't, learn how to respond rather than react. So it's neat because you can see the impact this book had on Jim Rohn, on his philosophies, on what he's shared. I love the fact that he's spent so much time sharing what he learned so that it could be benefit to all of us. Uh, and the recommendation of this book by Jim Rohn is you know, fantastic. It's, it's such an excellent beginning and start to learning how to become um, the richest person um, in your city or town and, and creating that wealth. So I, I thank you know, George Clayson, I thank Jim Rohn, I thank the Babylonians, and I hope you see the value of this book. I hope you read it and enjoy the benefits that it will allow for you and your family. So uh, I think that's all I have for today. Hope you guys are enjoying your day. Um, beautiful Sunday here. And now it's time to spend some uh, family time, maybe take the dog for a walk. So I hope you are enjoying your um, family time as well with your family on this beautiful day. So I'll talk to you soon, guys. Thanks. Bye.